For this video, I traveled to Sanford, Florida to visit the only garbage truck museum in the entire country. Okay, so I'm going to start this video with a disclaimer. This is technically a private collection of trucks. It is not a traditional museum with an admission price at the front door, nor are they technically open to the public. This particular museum is located at um, a regional office for Waste Pro, which is a trash collection company. All the trucks you see here in this video have been restored basically in the, the rest restoration shops all the way in the back of this museum and uh, the vehicles are owned by uh, one of the owners of Waste Pro. So this particular museum is not currently a uh, not-for-profit or 401c, any of that kind of stuff. Uh, all of the uh, work and uh, uh, investment in the displays and facilities and restorations that's all being funded by one of the owners of the company um, out of his own you know pocket so I've been to museums in the past um, this is definitely one of those that's probably the greatest example of a passion project for somebody to invest all this money into restoring millions of dollars worth of garbage trucks and then not even open it to the public collecting admission fees to try to recoup some of that investment that's a quintessential example of just how passionate some people can be about a specific hobby. Now, one of the things that I want to stress right now is you can't just go up to the front office and ask for an admission to the museum. They're just going to turn you away. They don't accept any walk-ins, anything like that. I found out about this particular museum, which is also not advertised, by um, a few of the staff members when I was filming at uh, Paquette's Historic Tractor Museum. They had mentioned that there was a garbage truck museum over here in uh, Sanford. And, you know, Leesburg isn't all that far from Sanford, so they were in the know about it. But very few people have actually seen the inside of this place. It's, it's you know, it's a challenge because it's not technically open to the public. I had emailed Waste Pro and asked about the place, and after about a couple days, they... Uh, uh, scheduled an appointment for me so I could come in and, and film the entire museum and I'm so incredibly grateful for them giving me this opportunity to uh, finally see the place. So right now the uh, the museum consists of three main halls where the garbage trucks are located. Uh, the very first room is focused on the old trucks, uh, 1950s and earlier. Then you, as you walk back towards um, the rear of the building you'll get to an adjoining garage and that's where that big auto car truck was located and then behind that is the third hallway where they actually have um, the newer trucks um, and uh, that is um, basically uh, the room before you get to the actual restoration shop which is behind that building and then there is also like a library classroom area that is connected to that very first room that you get to Plus, there's like a lobby area as well that actually has all those die-cast cars and it's got that uh, plow that was used at the dump, that yellow thing. But uh, overall, this is an impressive facility and, you know, I've been to some pretty expensive truck museums over the years that didn't have nearly as many vehicles as this one. Um, I didn't specifically count how many garbage trucks were here, but it was definitely in excess of 50 or 60. In addition, uh, I actually got to go back to the, uh, the restoration garage where you can actually see a lot of the trucks in progress. What's remarkable about this particular museum is, you know, you can't get components for like a 1925 Mack truck anymore. So what you're seeing is they're taking some really rough um, trucks that are probably beyond repair for most people and they're actually custom fabricating a lot of the components to put them back together and it's it's incredible the 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 amount of effort um, 
And, you know, uh, I was talking to the museum curator, and he said, you know, a lot of these trucks are, are costing sixty to $80,000 to do a complete restoration on. So they're putting a lot of money into this. You can see just how passionate they are about garbage trucks. And the owners of Waste Pro, they're three generations of garbage men. You can see just how this is just like a family tradition, and it's it's a legacy. It's not just a museum for them. And... I really appreciate that, and I wish more companies would, would be operated like Waste Pro is. I learned so much when I was here. I mean, there were some really cool trivia elements that I didn't know. For example, uh, you know the hood ornament on the Mack trucks? If it's gold, that means it has a complete uh, Mack truck powertrain. If it's uh, silver, then that means they sourced you know outside components uh, for the Mack truck, for example, it might not have a Mack transmission or a Mack built engine, those type of things. And most Mack trucks nowadays just have that silver hood ornament on them instead of the, the gold one like the, uh, the trucks made back in the 90s and 80s and 70s. Another cool piece of trivia is, uh, you know, I grew up in the 80s and listened to a lot of rock music and Rio Speedwagon. That was uh, just a group that made a lot of 80s hits for me. I didn't realize they were actually named after the Rio Speedwagon. So you'll see this uh, this big truck, this red one. It says Rio and Speedwagon on the side, and that's where the name came from. I believe this truck was made in the 19... Maybe, actually, I take that back. I think it's uh, newer than that. I think it's the 1950s. But, uh, yeah, that's, the, that's where the name Rio Speedwagon came from. It was uh, from the Rio company. And I also learned that the Rio uh, big truck company was... Uh, founded by the same guy who established uh, Oldsmobile. I believe the founder of that company was R.E. Olds. One of the primary missions of this particular channel was always to kind of scout out those hidden gems of specific areas. And I got to tell you, this is probably the absolute coolest hidden gem I've ever found. And I've now produced about 100 episodes kind of searching for one. There's just nothing like this anywhere, literally in the nation. There's no other garbage truck museum. I've done extensive research on it, and it doesn't exist. This is a one-of-one one example, and uh, definitely a unicorn, and, and it just, it's just an incredible place to, to see and experience. Now, this museum will probably continue to evolve. I have a feeling that they will eventually turn into a nonprofit 401c and open to the public. They're just not prepared to do it yet. Um, but if you have, a, like, I guess a special event or a field trip, the place is definitely open for students. Uh, that's why they have the, the classroom. So if you're a teacher that wants to do a field trip here or have a, a, a group of people that might be interested in this place, you can send them an email and I guess they'll decide on a case-by-case -case basis whether it's appropriate or not. So now that I've visited quite a few truck museums over the years, it's kind of been a focus of my channel. Um, I've been to all the major ones really, the big ones up in the Northeast and Iowa and I've been to the Keystone and while it's not as big as some of those, this is an impressive collection, a really impressive collection. It's definitely the nicest truck museum I've seen in the, the southeast United States, and the uniqueness of these vehicles to, to have a focus on just garbage trucks and refuse trucks, it really does make the place just completely unlike any of those other experiences. It's, if you are a huge truck enthusiast like I am, this should be on your bucket list. At the moment, they've got about four or five trucks in the shops that are currently being restored. Uh, something I'd also like to point out is outside, they've got another half dozen trucks uh, waiting for uh, a bay to open up in the restoration shops because those are also going to be restored in the future and uh, put on display. Something else that's really neat about this museum is they do work with uh, production companies and uh, a lot of their trucks that are in this museum uh, will go on and be used in Hollywood TV shows and uh, movies. Uh, one of the, the trucks they had in the, the front hallway was used in the, the uh, Denzel Washington movie Fences. And it's actually kind of funny because I was talking to the curator at about it and they had spent about $60,000 making the truck look completely brand new, factory fresh, and just, you know, flawless paint, all that other stuff. So as soon as they handed it over to the production company, 
they uh, just trashed the truck. They made it look all old and worn, and you know they sprayed fake movie dirt on it and fake rust and all kinds of stuff, and and make it look all you know tattered. Even though underneath all that uh, fake paint and fake dirt, uh, the truck is is still immaculate underneath the all that uh, grime. So that's kind of a funny thing. They said they're currently working with. Um, Amazon Prime uh, about placing another one of their garbage trucks in uh, one of their TV shows. So hopefully that truck will fare a little better and be a little more cosmetically pleasing when it returns uh, after its uh, starring role on uh, Miss Maisel. I believe that was the TV show. So now I'm going to take you on a full walking tour of the museum. I'm going to start in the main hallway up front and walk all the way to the back and these are the three main halls that contain all the garbage trucks here.
Thanks for joining me on this tour of the Waste Pro Garbage Truck Museum here in Sanford, Florida. If you enjoyed this episode of The Adventure Schmuck, don't forget to like and subscribe.